Sex ed teachers of Reddit. What is the craziest misconception you have cleared up? I remember being in grade 5 or 6, having the first ex ed class of our young and budding 10 year old lives, having the wonders of life explained to us. We got to the point of explaining how babies were made, and one of my classmates got hung up on a point. He raised his hand and asked the teacher is sperm hot? We all blankly stared at the teacher waiting an answer. She replied with an awkward, broken answer. Well, it's not boiling or anything like that before she could continue. The classmate restated the question, but is it like, hot, like temperature hot the teacher still confused tried her best. Well no, it's not like tea or coffee, haven't you felt it before? Now, with us being 10, I don't know what she was thinking, but some of us laughed, some were grossed out, but that classmate was almost angry. No, I haven't. But is it hot? She ended up explaining to us that it would only be as hot as your body is, it turns out the kid was just worried about hurting future partners with his boiling hot semen. Boiling hot semen. Dibs on band name. Taught human growth and development aka sex ed to 5th and 6th grade boys. In our schools you have to have a co-teacher with you, which happened to be my best friend as well. Mistake. The boys are encouraged to write out questions on nauticas and turn them in, which makes them try to prank us and see if we will read it out loud. Best ever, what would happen if a man had X with a sheep to which my buddy replied. Well that would be bad. You always keep the good nauticids. I'm gonna throw this out there, they need to teach girls that urine doesn't come from the same hole that the penis goes in. I have dated 3 girls who were 20 plus at the time who never knew this. They actually went into the bathroom to see if I was lying to them. I'm curious how they thought the whole tampon thing worked. I'm not a ex ed teacher, but when I was in 4th grade I thought men could only have 2 kids because they only had 2 testicles. It made sense, because every man I knew had 2 kids. Except my buddy Greg had 2 siblings. Once I reached my revelation I reasoned that Greg's mom must have cheated on his dad in order to have a third kid. I would have assumed Greg's dad had 3 testicles. Taught in inner city classroom in Boston. These kids asked the best questions. Doesn't anal cause cancer? I'd ask, what can HIV lead to? Does it lead to blue waffle? I don't want to get that. Will plan B work faster if you snort at good times? Will plan B work faster if you snort it? This is the best question in the entire thread. When my kids were in grammar school a teacher came around and talked to them about their private places. For the next week or so my daughters kept saying that they got hit in their privates they were in first and second grade I think, so rough housing was common, and I figured since it was a new phrase they were using it as much as possible. Then one day the youngest came in and said her sister wouldn't quit touching her in her privates I was starting to freak out. I asked her to show me where her sister was touching. She pointed to her arm. I was flabbergasted and said how is that your privates she then informed me that the teacher who talked to them about bad touching said that a place that made you feel uncomfortable was your privates and that her sister touching her arm was making her uncomfortable. After that I got out my anatomy and physiology book from school and we had a much longer discussion about such things. My ex ed teacher in high school told us stories about a female student she had a long time ago. The student got pregnant and was freaking out to our teacher not knowing what happened because she had apparently been taking birth control. My teacher was asking her typical questions about her situation, how long she was taking them, etc. Then later the girl mentioned she had been taking her birth control pills vaginally. She figured that since the baby comes from there, that's where you take the pill. As a pharmacist this is exactly why we put take one tablet by mouth daily or take one teaspoonful by mouth. I had a mother pour an oral antibiotic suspension in her kid's ear for an earache once. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in a certain small sub-Saharan African country where ex-education was practically non-existent. Talking about ex openly was a bit taboo. 
and misconceptions were everywhere. As the sole outsider in my village, I was assumed to be the local expert on everything, from computers to physics to world politics to calculus to, yes, X. There were so many myths, but one sticks in my mind because it was so bizarre, so prevalent, and I've never heard it anywhere else, semen is the only source of vitamin K, so girls must begin having X at an early age to get proper nutrition, this was startling for a whole tangled mass of reasons, the cultural initiation rites that perpetuated the myth and coerced 12 year old girls to have X with men twice their age, the inverse relationship between prevalence of evades and the degree of knowledge about preventing it, the enormous cultural pressure to marry young and have lots of babies, and the lack of knowledge about nutrition in general parents commonly ate balanced meals while their kids were given only a type of corn mash. Believing that this was the only thing necessary to help them grow strong. Basically, my students were already stunted from malnutrition, facing a lot of pressure to have X, and labouring under mountains of misinformation about it, but then there was this additional myth telling them they needed to start having X without condoms as soon as possible so their bodies would develop normally. I held ex ed talks at my school to combat this, taught them how to put on a condom correctly, and gave some additional talks about nutrition for good measure. Oh man, the discussions we had. I was a PCV in Tanzania lots of similarities. Where were you? One of the strangest things I heard was that in some places in Africa, women would actually try to dry out their vaginas before ex. The idea was that women should be hot dry, and extremely tight. Any lubrication meant that a woman had just had X with someone else. It's a tough battle against misinformation out there. The mission trips don't exactly help much, either, not when their intended message is that contraception is bad. My roommate freshman year of college had no idea that women could orgasm it wasn't a religious university, but the girl had had an exclusively religious education prior. This came out during a discussion about a screamer down the hall, when my roommate genuinely had no idea why a woman would be enjoying X. Why is the idea that people don't actually enjoy X a common trend in this thread? So. So. Sad. I'm no X ed teacher, but I went to a very sheltered private school that did not teach basic X education. It only went as far as covering puberty, so parents had to fill in the rest. And my mom fricked it up pretty badly. She started by describing the male genitalia penis first, then balls. But she never said the word penis again. Only it. IT gets hard so IT can go inside the vagina and the whole time having never seen what an adult penis looks like, I assume she's means the balls go into the vagina. And since I'd only seen a baby penis from daycare where the balls actually are bigger than the penis, it made sense. I thought this for several years until a friend cleared that misconception up. I also was unaware of thrusting. I thought you just put it in a weighted a bit. You have to let the balls marinate. In 8th grade one of my classmates was fully convinced both his parents were virgins. We tried to explain how that was impossible, but he wouldn't believe us. They could have adopted artificially inseminated, right? I'm not a health ed teacher, but back in 8th grade I saw a girl crying in the ladies room. I walked over and asked her what was wrong, and she told me that she was bleeding down there and she legitimately thought that she had internal damage and was dying. I had a friend that this happened to. She hid the bloody underwear for months and was convinced she dropped dead at any time. Fortunately, I was in Girl Scouts and they were pretty good about letting all of us know what to expect. My sister is a sex ed teacher. Apparently a belief that more than a few students have is that yellow skittles can act as birth control. I'm assuming this is from the yellow number 5 dye that is used. When I was in grade school we thought that drinking Mountain Dew reduced your sperm count because of the same yellow number 5. It's impossible to say how many, if any, couples relied solely on Mountain Dew for birth control. But it was enough of an issue that the Wall Street Journal ran an article about it, as did a number of city and university newspapers. 
Dear Abby even warned her readers not to rely on the soft drink to prevent pregnancy. Everyone knows Crocs are a better birth control. That is gold. Edit 1. I meant to say that the gold skittles were the actual birth control. Most people just used yellow instead though due to overpricing of the gold skittles. That was a crucial mistake on their part. Edit 2. Apparently I'm a horrible ninja. I'm a developmental support worker at a treatment home for dual diagnosed teenage boys. As my co-workers and I basically raise these kids we regularly field X questions. When I was pregnant these were my two favorites. So when the baby's big enough you'll just poop it out right is it a puppy? English teacher here. Okay, not X ed, but you'd be surprised about the blurted statements during the Romeo and Juliet unit. So I had one girl who honestly believed that she couldn't get pregnant if she didn't have an orgasm. Had one boy who thought humans basically stopped growing pubic hair in the 1980s. Believed you could get AIDS by being gay. Not having unprotected intercourse, but just homorexal. Had one boy who thought humans basically stopped growing pubic hair in the 1980s. That is freaking hilarious. 27 year old co-worker thought you could get AIDS by being in the same room with someone who had it. We had a patient who had it. He was on his way out because of it. Junkie who shared needles. Before we entered the room, he wore a mask, which I understood because he smelled bad but not more than the average homeless person. He, then, starts to cough and leaves. I stay until I was done talking to the patient about all the new equipment that he was going to be on. Coworker was outside saying he didn't want to breathe in the AIDS. I swear, I laughed so hard, I got lightheaded, fell, and peed a little. To this day, it's the third most embarrassing thing he'd ever said or done. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.